it has broccoli on it. <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, like yesterday, my guest today is also from Portland. There seems to be a lot of healthy plant-based eaters up there. Her name is Linda Tyler, and she is going to be doing an amazing food demo, a plant-based Valentine's Day menu, so many delicious recipes, and I think there's even brownies on the menu with peanut butter and chocolate. Please welcome Linda to the show. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you, Chef AJ. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really honored to be on your show. And you do have a lot of fans up here in Portland and Vancouver, Washington. And I think we all appreciate what you're doing to keep the whole plant-based community together during the pandemic. So Thank you on many fronts. Well, thank you. I'm not going to rest until every single vegan that wants to be on the show is on the show. And I really appreciate that you reached out to me because early on, I was reaching out to people and facing a lot of rejection. Like if I wanted to be on your show, I'd contact you. So I love it when people like you just contact me, which is very easy. If you know me, you just send an email or through the website. I got back to you right away and I gave you the right. first available day. And especially for cooking demos, it's very hard to turn down a cooking demo because people <laughs> love to see with brownies. <laughs> well, exactly. With brownies for Valentine's Day. But Linda, before you get into the recipes, tell us a little bit about yourself. When did you first discover plant-based eating or veganism? How sure. long were you eating healthy? Sure. I'd love to hear your story. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. I became a vegetarian when I was in college back in the day. So that was when my first cookbook was Diet for a Small Planet. And soon after that, the Moosewood, the original Moosewood cookbook. So that gives you a little bit of dating about how old I am, but I love, I've always loved cooking. And so I cooked a lot as a vegetarian. And then um, it was uh, 2010, when I started reading articles, seeing articles on conditions in dairy farms and egg farms, and I just said, I can't eat them. You know, I can't, even though they don't kill the animal, I just can't let, an I, animals should not be caged and suffer that way. So I gave myself a couple months to see if I wanted to do the vegan thing. And it only took a month or two. It wasn't as hard as I thought, although I did have to re-engineer quite a few of my recipes and really think about how to cook again. And then it was, uh, I lived in New Jersey at the time and did not know many vegan, many plant-based eaters. I was busy working a full-time job and just keeping my head down. And after I quit my day job in 2015, I had time to go to the um, Vegetarian Summer Fest conference in Youngstown, Pennsylvania. And you were there and I had a wonderful roommate in the dorms, Amy Wolf, who knew your work and was there exclusively for plant-based healthy eating. And I was there for animal rights and vegan and vegan, you know, um, how to be a good vegan and get other people to go vegan. And then suddenly the whole world of healthy plant-based eating was opened up to me, which I'd never heard of. Again, I had my head down most of the time. And I saw Dr. Greger give a talk. Um, I think some of the Campbell family was there. You know, that in 2015, it was an amazing conference. And so I just went home and started uh, finding out more and more about whole food plant-based eating and pretty quickly kind of again reinvented my cooking gave up oil gave up sugar gave up all those kinds of things and saw the benefits and then after i moved to portland later that year i met other people who ate that way also of course a lot of vegans who weren't as interested in plant-based whole foods but uh, it's a nice community, and, and I was struck at the 2015 conference at how uh, wonderful sort of both sides of the community were very accepting of each other, and um, it was just a lovely dynamic. The speakers were great. The, the demos were great, like yours. The food was great, and so that was sort of the pivotal moment toward healthy plant-based eating. That's great. Well, it doesn't have to be an either or, you know, it can be both. Or actually now, now with the environment in danger, it's the That's right. It's a freezer. Yep. 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 That's fantastic. That's great. So did, you didn't know your roommate until you were there? 
I didn't know they if you if you're coming as a singleton and you check the box like I want a double room, they pair you up with someone. And I was really lucky to get paired up with Amy. Are you guys still friends? We are. She lives in Delaware, so we don't see each other much, but we are still friends. That's still pretty cool. It's like being in college there, isn't it? The dorm rooms, they're not the most comfortable uh, accommodations, but it's a wonderful concept. Yeah, they're fine. And it's just a nice atmosphere and you're out in the middle of nowhere. And it just feels like we're here to do this and everybody's in it, you know? There's nowhere to go if you wanted nightlife. You stay. You know. You that's stay. true. That's true. Johnstown, Pennsylvania, not known for it. Yeah. Yet. And you're right. Whenever when Mark Rangfeld took over, man, the food got incredible there. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, was- and so two years ago, I started teaching for Portland Community College because I was doing demos, in-person demos around Portland. And then obviously March, 2020, everything shut down, no food demos. They still haven't started again, really. But uh, I started teaching online classes with Portland and then a little bit later with Mount Hood Community College. So I teach those from my kitchen and the students can cook along if they want or just watch if they want. So that's going really well as well. Are are these college classes, are they specifically for plant-based eaters? Like, is that how they're billed? It's through community education. So it's, they don't, it's not for credit towards a program. So it's community ed and, um, you know, people, a lot of people are not already some, I would say half and half, half are already plant-based eaters or vegan and half are curious. So it's a mix of people who have some basic questions and just want some new to to eat more plant-based. And then there's also the, the diehards like me who, you know, really want to like where can we take it from here kind of thing that's great since going plant-based have you been able to influence any friends or family yes I have some friends it's taken sometimes longer than I would like and certainly uh, but I would say three or four friends are much much more plant-based because of that and I I also teach through Portland Community College one-on-one plant-based lifestyle coaching. So I've, you know, worked with people one-on-one to move toward a plant-based lifestyle. Also, my husband is not a vegan, but he hates to cook. And so he eats, he does have a carton of milk downstairs, but other than that, he eats vegan when he's at home, which is 99% of oh the time. God. But but why milk? Because, you know, it's I, like, if, if you're going to get rid of anything, that's what I would tell I know, about. that's what most people give up first, right? Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. Well, yeah. you got to pick your battles, right? Yeah, it's just, uh, just, just as I worry just so much with men and prostate to just yeah. to milk, it really concerns me. But anyway, yeah. but I'm sure you're a fabulous cook because just looking at your recipe description, it sound amazing. Oh, well, thank you. I is this what you're going to make for your Valentine's Day dinner? Yes, it is. Well, good. Then we get the preview here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So Yeah, I wanted to talk about healthy plant-based Valentine's Day because there are so few choices, especially with COVID and restaurants closing, but there's so few even then uh, that have nice plant-based dinners, you know, from soup to nuts, so to speak. And so I always think it's good to think about, let's just make it from home. So, you know, first I think about the table, nice tablecloth or placemats, maybe get out a couple settings of china or at least nice dishes nice utensils maybe some flowers for the table maybe some candles so you know you can recreate some of the ambiance in your own home just by thinking about the table which of course we can't think about every day and then i like to think about special dinners being more like a restaurant in that you're not serving family style but you're serving people on individual plates So you're giving them an entree and a side dish, in my case today with a sauce, on an individual plate plate and serving them that. And then maybe serving the salad again on individual plates, not family style, and maybe as a second course or a first course if you want your salad first. And then of course the dessert as well. So thinking about courses, thinking about individual plates, and also thinking about garnishes. So almost every you know, dish could, could use a garnish or um, 
can benefit from a few herbs, a few nuts, a few seeds, you know, they, you don't have to like pile them on, but just a few go a long way. So those are sort of the parameters around uh, making a dinner a little more special than a typical weeknight dinner. And then of course, you have to think about what dishes or what recipes are appropriate for that, because not all dishes are appropriate for that kind of serving. So when I was thinking about entrees, I was thinking about pasta. Pasta is good. So if you have a favorite pasta recipe, you know, maybe it's with pesto, maybe marinara or a special plant-based fettuccine, Alfredo recipe. There's many kinds of pasta cucinesca that would look really nice on a plate restaurant style. Or you could make stuffed vegetables like a stuffed butternut squash, stuffed delicata squash, stuffed acorn squash, um, stuffed pepper. And then you could also, you know, some of us have some little casserole, individual casserole dishes. So if you have a favorite casserole, lasagna or another casserole, you could make those just this time special in individual servings rather than, you know, the big thing where you, you cut the the square out, that's fine too. You cut the square out, neatly put it on the plate, but even more interesting and exciting is to, for people to have their own little casserole dish. So if you have those, or ramekins, if you have some slightly larger ramekins than the usual small ones, those would work too. And then coordinating your side dish uh, with, your, with your main dish, one or two sides even. So with your sides, you might make roasted vegetables, which I'm gonna do today or uh, potatoes, um, grains, a grain pilaf, uh, any kind of steamed vegetables, maybe with a few toasted sliced almonds on top. So um, just sort of thinking about what would be a beautiful plate for each person to have. No, I agree. That's why I love, I don't do this often, but like for the holidays, I love doing stackable food. I have these things called the stackable gourmet. And I love to take things like I do different kinds of potatoes and sweet potatoes and cranberry relish and just make these beautiful stacks. I mean, I wouldn't do that every day, but like for holidays, it right. is beautiful. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, exactly. So what I'm going to do today is quickly demo my stuffed vegetable, which is stuffed bell pepper rings. And I made this recipe because whenever I've eaten um, stuffed bell peppers, I, I feel like there's too much pepper for the filling. I want less pepper, more filling. So what I said is I wonder if I could slice the pepper into rings, put them horizontally on a sheet and fill them with something. So you can do that, but it took me quite a few tries to get it so that there's a balance between those and it actually stays in one piece. So I wanted to demonstrate making that. And as you said, you're going to put the, um, the links on, on my site and on your site. So they're there now, so if, if okay. you're watching on Facebook, you'll have to go to YouTube to see it, but it's in the show notes right underneath where you're seeing this video. I, I just finished doing it. Great. So the, the key ingredient is what I call a thick white sauce, which I've already made. And it has water, silk and tofu, nutritional yeast, lemon zest, onion and garlic powder, and paprika, and uh, some cornstarch. So the cornstarch makes it thick, which is what we need because this is gonna have to kind of stay in one piece. And then uh, uh, rice, you could have two, two cups of rice here. You could do any cooked grain. I did brown rice, cooked it in the Instant Pot yesterday. And then some peas, I'm using peas. You could use olives, you could use any vegetables, you could use nuts, toasted nuts, anything to just add a little zazz there so it's not just rice. And then some parsley, again, you can choose your own herb. And then you just toss those together. This is a this is a half recipe of what I have on my site. The site would serve a, a pretty good family, a pretty hungry family. So I'm making half here so that you, you stir that up and then you cut your peppers into half, half 
half inch rings. So I cut the top off, just the top, and I can, I can save this to, to dice for something else. Then I carefully get the seeds and the veins out and just sort of dig in there. So it's a hollow. So now if you were just making peppers, you know, stuffed peppers, you would stuff it at this point. That's too much pepper for me. So then I cut it, slice it carefully into these rings. And you can make a ring out of the bottom one if you like, you can cut the bottom off, that's fine. Usually most peppers make four or five rings. I'll do my one more. I love that you're using red because green bell peppers upset my stomach. Oh yes, yeah. I, I've, I've met quite a few people who, who have that same reaction to green. So yeah, red is obviously- Maybe because they're unripe, that's what I heard. Yes, I think that's probably the case. And there we go, we're getting our four out of this one. Even this bottom one, you know, it's, it's not perfect, but somebody might want a small one. And in that case, I'm gonna just cut out, I have to have a hole in the middle that touches the parchment paper. So I have these on the parchment paper. And then I take the stuffing and just press it in. So it's, it's going to solidify as it bakes. And stay in one piece. That's such a great idea. And you could probably do the same thing with squash, you know, have rings instead of using the whole uh, thing. I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would work. And then you can, you know, you can go, you can mound it. I, what, what's key is to really get it in the nooks and crannies so it sticks to the sides. That is something I else I found out through trial and error. And, get, and then um, it's fine to kind of mound it up a little bit. So they have a little bit of a vertical interest there because you're gonna cook it for 35 minutes. So things will get done for sure at 400. So everything gets done. All right, this guy needs his, get it in there. And one more guy needs his mounding. Okay, it's also pretty because you're doing it for Valentine's Day. It's nice that you're using the red. Yes, exactly, exactly. So then we uh, cover it with. I use some parchment and then a piece of foil. You don't need to wrap, wrap, wrap. Just foil on top to keep the parchment down and bake it for 400. Uh, at 400 degrees for 30 minutes, then you take off the top and let the, the tops brown a little bit. So um, that's how you make those. And after I make the sauce, I'll show you the ones that I made beforehand and then we'll put the sauce you, on those. Did you always enjoy cooking even before you were planting? I did, I did. I have a photo here in the kitchen of my mother at the mixer and me on a chair looking at her watching. So we used to cook a lot together. And yeah. so I've always loved cooking. And as I said, I had to, you know, stop cooking like my mother when I became a vegetarian, stop cooking like Molly Katzen when I became a vegan. And then, uh, and then I had to sort of reinvent once again with the plant-based. I think you're right that, you know, I find that people that enjoy cooking have always cooked because I started when I was seven. And oh, really? I, I think the people that are resistant to it is because they've never done it. It's kind of like exercise. People that grew up always with exercise being modeled and exercising love it and people that didn't don't. So I think it's what, so you true. Know. You know, when I remember I used to read articles that said it takes 30 days to form a habit. It's like, 
No, it doesn't. Longer than that. <laughs> At least for me in exercise, it took a long time where it was a, quite an effort to do it every day, but it does finally become a, a habit. But yes, I do, I do think you're right that people who are scared to cook in the first place, it's hard for them to start cooking plant-based. Yeah. So I thought I would make uh, a Thai inspired cilantro sauce for the plate to go with these uh, stuffed peppers. So this is not like super hot. You can make it hotter if you like. Um, I'll run through this. It's actually pretty easy and you can serve it at room temperature, which is nice. So six garlic cloves, already like it. And two jalapeno peppers, chilies. You can cut out the seeds and veins if you don't like it hot or leave them in or use another kind of chili if you like. Then um, four cups of fresh cilantro. You can use some of the stems, the thinner stems, maybe not all of the bottom stems, but usually about one and a half bunches from the store. So then that cilantro fills up your mix, your, your blender. And then water, half cup of water. And then we have peanut butter and third cup of peanut butter, which is a pretty common flavor in some Thai dishes, of course. And then coconut, dried flaked coconut, unsweetened. Third cup of that. And then a quarter cup of lime juice gives it that nice kick. Some soy sauce, two tablespoons of soy sauce. You could use Thai light soy sauce or tamari or whatever soy sauce you like. And then um, cut up ginger, chopped ginger or ginger paste. And then you blend it. So it's pretty, pretty easy. Let's hope we get it to catch here. High speed blender gets this really nice and smooth, which I love. Um, my Vitamix does not like a half recipe of this. So if I'm making a half recipe, I use a container in my immersion blender or maybe my bullet blender, but nothing gets it as smooth as, as, the, uh, as a high speed blender. So true. Yeah. I hate to tell people that, but it's true. <laughs> okay, let's see. And, and, and it's quicker because you'd have to blend a really long time in another blender to get that level of smoothness. Exactly. That's right. So here is my pre-baked pre tray of the bell pepper rings. So I will put a couple of these on the plate. We still don't have our side dish, but we'll have that in a minute. Uh, let's say this is for somebody who's hungry. We'll give them two and a little one. They're pretty filling, actually. And then we will, what I had, my drizzle, drizzle spoon here. Here it is. She used this little drizzle spoon to. Do some of this nice cilantro sauce around the edge. Then I will, uh, so that's already looking pretty. But wow, well, one would think you've worked in a restaurant. <laughs> and then once we get the side dish, then we'll just drizzle a little more of that. So side dishes, we talked about what we may make. I wanted to show my no oil uh, vegetable roasting 
uh, because, you know, so many people when I'm cooking and doing my class and I say, you know, something about not using oil, usually in the chat, I get what's wrong with oil. You know, there's so much marketing about how healthy olive oil is. And usually like the follow up is question. The question is, well, you don't mean coconut oil, too, right? It's like, <laughs> yes, I mean, coconut especially oil. coconut oil. It's the worst. There's so much saturated fat, but um, so I wanted to show my approach to that. And so I use a little uh, mix of tahini and water and spices and get a really good result because I use a really hot oven. So here is my formula. I use five teaspoons of water. And then four teaspoons of tahini, so not too much. I know you do, you know, Chef AJ, you do low fat mm -hmm. everything. So tahini might not be your go-to, but. I just started using it in one recipe in a ranch dressing, four tablespoons. So a, a little bit's not so bad. Yeah, yeah. certainly compared to three tablespoons of oil. Oh, and then um, for, you can then choose your spices. I like to use a little garlic powder, a little onion powder. I find that the, you know, the onion and garlic powder work well. You don't really have to put in all the effort of the, you know, peeling and mincing and it might burn, the garlic can burn too. So I just use the powder and it works. And I love a little smoke paprika in my roasted vegetables as well. Now you could just start with the tahini and water and add your favorite spices. You know, this is just a sort of a blueprint for, for making, um, for a nice coating. And then I preheat the oven to, I use convection 450. And the other thing I now do is I don't use parchment or a silicone mat because I find you get that nicer, I get a nicer crispness on the edges without that. And then I thought to myself, oh, the cleanup's gonna be awful. I'm gonna hate that, but it actually wasn't that bad. You know, cleanup of almost any healthy plant food is so much better than cleaning up with oil. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, and not then, using oil, it's yeah. so much easier to clean and it saves money too. Oh my gosh, yeah. So I have now my pound of broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cauliflower. And it's important to toss them really well so that each one gets a little bit of that coating. The coating is, sometimes I get, I got a comment on my site that was like, um, you know, this only worked for half of a cauliflower head. It wasn't enough, but if you toss it enough, enough gets on the vegetables. You can put salt too if you use salt. And enough gets on each one where you, um, it is enough. And so, also, if you have way too much, it tends to burn on the bottom of the pan. So best to have just, just enough like this. Then I just spread them on my sheet pan. And in a single layer, and they're ready to go. So that is my roasted vegetables. And of course, I made some beforehand because I usually bake these for these cruciferous types of vegetables, 15 to 25 minutes. So after 15 minutes, I go in and flip them around and see how they're doing. And then sometimes they need another five minutes, sometimes another 10. So it's usually 15 to, 15 to 25. But I made some beforehand. So you can see there's some nice crispness. And, you know, I don't think anybody, unless they're really like super curious, are going to say, hey, that's not oil. What's wrong with you? 
So, and they have a, just a lovely flavor. And so people, people like. You know what else is great for roasting vegetables in is balsamic vinegar. Ah, yes. Yeah. So that, yes, that would be a nice alternative as well. So there's our plate. There's our entree and our side. Again, you could do two sides if you wanted. And then, uh, let me put this over here. Amazing, you're obviously very talented. Sorry? I said you're very talented because the food looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And so you can do one last drizzle and serve yourself. Now, can regular people take your classes or do they have to be going to these community colleges? No, regular people can. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anybody can take them. They're, um, you know, I do them on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. But um, I also record them so people could sign up. And if Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Pacific time is doesn't work for them. They can watch the recording. But, you know, if you're on the East Coast and it's 9 p.m., you could at least watch, if not cook a, cook a lot. So, yeah, it's free. to. I mean, it's not free, but it's open to anyone to take uh, Portland Community College or Mountain Hood Community College uh, community education. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So then our salad, um, again, we talked about having it on an individual plate. And um, here's some greens. Just pick some, I just used some spring mix there. And then um, you could you know, use nuts, fruit. I'm gonna see how this pear is. It feels ripe. Yeah, it looks good. And you can do, you know, let's go. Oh, there's some bruising here, but we'll cut around that. Looks so good. Yeah, and people, you know, people don't think, oh, I'd like a pear on my salad. But once you give them a pear on their salad, they're like, ooh, this is really good. So. Pears are elegant. Yes, they are. So, you know, you can do a nesting circle or you could do chunks if you want to do chunks. That's fine. Um, I'm going to make my dressing and then we'll drizzle that on and then we'll put on a few garnishes as well. So for my dressing, I chose, I, I make a lot of no oil dressings. Um, I chose a um, no oil balsamic for today. And it is pretty easy. I usually make small recipes like this in my bullet blender. So, this takes uh, almond butter. You could use tahini, but I like to, I'm going to put in the water first. So the almond butter, maybe I'll put in everything before the almond butter so it doesn't stick to the bottom. It takes a um, quarter cup of balsamic vinegar. and two teaspoons of Dijon mustard. Again, you can sort of adjust all these things to your taste. Um, some maple syrup, tablespoon or two of maple syrup. And um, a little oregano, salt if you like, pepper, and then that almond butter which gives it kind of a, the creaminess. It's sort of like a creamy, creamy balsamic vinaigrette. And you don't need much and it starts to thicken up the next day. You can add water so uh, you can make it whatever texture you, you like. So we have our bullet blender here.
and we're done. It's just a question of measuring out ingredients. Are you writing a book? Uh, not yet, but I, I have started a proposal to write a cookbook, yeah. Yes, I would love to do that. Do you cook every day? I do because, you know, I do a lot of, um, you know, I try to get so on average one recipe out at least one a week uh, on my site. And so, and I'm also testing recipes for my classes because I give out a handout of four or five recipes in my classes. So I end up testing a lot of recipes and trying to get them just right, you know? So I do cook. What lot. are the class favorites? Um, they like the desserts a lot. I'm just drizzling on that dressing. And then I'm going to add a few dried cranberries. There was one uh, and then a few roasted almonds, roasted chopped almonds. You could do obviously sliced or slivered. I had these roasted chopped almonds here. So again, that's gonna make people feel special, especially if they get that as a first course or a second course where everybody takes their time and, and enjoys their salad rather than, you know, wolfing it down. So there's our salad. And then, you know, and when you're done, I'd love for you to come as close to the phone or camera as possible so we can get really nice close ups. Okay. Okay. And finally, dessert. So, um, you know, I think people love chocolate on Valentine's Day, berries. Um, so I'm going to combine those two with some brownies and then top them with a, a cream and some raspberries, but you could do chocolate mousse, you could do, uh, you know, chocolate and ice cream and do sort of a sundae. Uh, you could do some raw brownies, mix those in with chocolate and ice cream. So AG, uh, Chef AJ, I'm sure you have lots of other ideas for chocolate desserts, but um, people just love chocolate. And, and I also think that uh, some berries, if you can get them, just make them really special. So I am going to do, um, I gave you the link to my brownies with peanut butter swirl. I'm eliminating the peanut butter swirl for this recipe because I'm gonna put the, the uh, cashew cream and the raspberries on top. Um, but the base is nice as little cakes. So what I'm gonna do is bake them in ramekins so everybody gets an individual one, but you could bake them in small, like um, spring form or even a small, maybe a small eight inch round or even six inch taller round cake and slices and put all sorts of different things on top. But this, it's a good basic uh, chocolate, sort of chocolate cake slash brownie recipe. So let's start here. This is a, an easy two bowl method. So first I use date paste. Now you could blend everything at this point and not make the date paste ahead of time. I just, for this recipe, I was in kind of a date paste mode and you can freeze date paste and have it so you're not making it for every recipe that calls for it. I just like how smooth date paste is. So I love one. date paste. So do you make your own? I do. Yeah. Um, do you buy it? Um, I have, but I really prefer to make my own. Yeah. It's, it's moisture. Yeah. I, yeah. That's what I've seen on the ones you can buy. It seems cakey, kind of dry. Then a half cup of applesauce. We all know that gives some of that moisture that you don't get when you leave out the oil. And then a third cup of maple syrup. Another sweetener. Then 
more almond butter, two tablespoons of almond butter. Again, that gives some of us some of that natural fat for moisture. And then uh, a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Chef AJ, I know you use vanilla powder. Do you use it in baked goods? Yeah, I think it just tastes better. I really yeah. do. I, do. I think it does. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. I got a little snobby there, but that's about the only thing that I ever say really. Is good. it a uh, one for one is the equivalent? Like I think you actually end up using a little bit less. Oh. You know, I know that when you use alcohol free vanilla, you have to use a little more than if you're using extract with alcohol. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's, so I think if it's like, a, you know, you can do it to taste. You always do less because it's expensive and it's very potent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which makes sense if it's the powdered bean. So yeah, yeah that's what it is. Right. So. This is easy just to fork whisk together. I don't have to get out equipment. Even I don't have to get out a whisk even. Then um, I combine my dry ingredients in a bowl and I like to whisk, I mean, sift things just so I don't have to worry about it. This is, um, this is whole wheat pastry flour. I have on my site a, uh, a recipe for an almond flour chocolate cake if you're looking for gluten-free. This one happens to have gluten. It, ha it has a uh, whole wheat pastry flour and it has cocoa powder, uh, a little bit of baking powder, baking soda, and, oh, I forgot to add the flax seed to the, to the liquids. So tablespoon of flax seed meal. All right. All right, then we sip those, you know, cocoa powder can be, can have a lot of secret lumps in it. So we'll get that out of there. All right, and then we stir these together. Just put the wet into the dry. And you can stir with a spatula, with a wooden spoon. It's a very easy, easy going recipe. Well, what's amazing is you're doing all these recipes and I doubt it's even gonna take a whole hour. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, obviously I measured things out before, but it's really not, they're, they're not that hard. And a lot of it, you know, if you wanted to, you could start a, a day or two early, you know, make the rice. You could even make these, these chocolate cakes a day ahead. You could, you know, prep some of your ingredients, your vegetables, your cilantro, you could prep the harder things and then uh, it really decreases the, the work um, when you when you're sort of getting ready for dinner. Yeah. Since Valentine's Day is Monday. Yeah. Do so you, do you do a lot of batch cooking yourself. I do. I do. I don't have a huge um, I don't have a huge freezer. Uh, so I don't do a ton of like make two gallons of soup and freeze everything. Uh, and I have to test a lot of recipes. So I tend not to make lots and lots of big batches, but I definitely am thinking about prepping things. And if I'm making, you know, garlic for this one, let me look at this next one and see if now that I have the garlic out, I can just do eight cloves instead of four. So yeah, I have like a prep, a prep mindset. It's a little bit more fluid than, you know, three hours on Sunday, just because I have to do a lot of cooking. But um, people, you know, I found that people have different prep styles. You know, some people really like to make full meals and freeze them. Other people like to make components and have components around. And so it's really sort of a personal style thing. And um, uh, I tend to like having the components. Yeah, I agree. I always have rice though. I mean, that's just like so easy to have because you can even buy frozen organic rice. It takes like three minutes to microwave. Right. Yeah. That's what I, I, um, 
I talk to folks, to the folks I coach about, you know, you don't have to be perfect. Just like if you need to buy frozen rice, buy it. If you need to buy, you know, chopped, chopped butternut squash, do it, you know, make your life as easy as possible. So yeah, that's definitely a style. That's definitely, let me get my already made. So the other thing, is that you know many of us over the years have picked up little plates or pans that are heart shaped so this is the day to get those out if they're way back in your cupboard so i bought these three dollar ramekins at fred meyer one year um so i put some of the brownie mix in here and baked those and so they're these little cakes and i can you know, serve those on a little tray. And I make um, a, a cashew based sweet cream with dates. Um, Chef AJ, I know you have your a pear cream, right? You know, I just, you, you just look like the most incredible gourmet chef, but yet you've made it so easy. You're, is your husband home right now? <laughs> he is but there is no way he's gonna get on camera no but is he can he hear me uh no I don't think he can no you think he'll watch this because I have this great idea yeah we okay to, we don't want him to get prostate cancer and men who drink oh. milk I mean could you just start like pouring out like a little bit of his milk I, what size does he buy it in like a gallon a half gallon a, a quart so do it so slowly. Like, it's almost like you're going to reverse poison him. Like, like literally pour out the smallest amount and then replace it with whatever milk tastes the most. Like, I don't know what milk tastes like. I'm allergic. I know. Could you, why don't you do that? Yeah. Well, I will have him also watch if you tell him how bad it is for his prostate, he would listen to that. Well, I mean, if he'll come up, I'll tell him because it's not even about the ethics, which of course are horrible and cruel, but you know, it's, I mean, I'm sure he's going to want those parts working and you know, that it's just, that is the, the reproductive cancers in both men and women. It's such, I mean, I can send him stuff, but I mean, that's my concern for you. Cause you're like a hot young chick and you know, I will, I will tell him and I will tell him that you personally, yeah. Because totally. I've seen people do that. I've had people do that with kids um, where over time, you know, it's kind of like when people go off coffee, sometimes it's really hard. And so what they do is they drink a certain amount of cups per day and then they, they'll they take like, let's say they're drinking, they're down to one cup and then they'll do like three fourths regular and a fourth caffeine. And then they'll do that yeah. over a period of time. So it's so slowly they don't know, but if you could reverse poison him, you know, I, I take out a little and I mean, I bet he wouldn't even. Yeah. I'll that. add in soy milk or oat milk, yeah, but don't tell him, you know, no, find out the one that tastes the best, but, but yeah, I mean, that's my concern is, is it's a good idea. Know, it's dairy, but anyway, he's yeah, very, I know, I know. Well, I will tell him that you personally are concerned and yeah. I so am I because I've had, I've had, you know, relatives, uh, you know, with prostate cancer, oh, it's, um, it can and, be and, you know, what happens is the ones horrible. that have had the surgery end up not only, uh, impotent, but incontinent. And it's not a fun thing, you know, I, I will, mean, just I for drinking milk, you. because there's no reason to drink it. I mean, unless, I don't know if he just actually just likes the taste, but you know, it's, it's, it's addictive. I mean, that, that's why people sometimes can't stop it. You know, I will, I will tell him the other thing I wanted to highlight was that I am running for the first time this year, what I call 30 day eating habit challenges. So we did the first one in January and I'm using two books. One is called atomic habits by James Clear and one is called um, Tiny Habits. They were published within a year of each other. It was kind of an interesting coincidence by BJ Fogg from Stanford University using a lot of psychological research about how to actually change, how to transform yourself, but do it very, very gradually and start very tiny. So I've been sending out emails and guidance about how to think tiny and how to uh, use their formulas and their guidance about just change one thing in the next 30 days. So if you wanna eat legumes at lunch, 
Here's how to set up an anchor moment. Here's how to think about your behavior and celebrate it. Here's how to make your environment supportive. Here's how to remind yourself. So we had 80 people join in January and a um, lot of good habits around drinking water, about replacing uh, coffee or replacing Diet Coke with mint tea and uh, eating more vegetables and fruit. So each person was supposed to pick one habit and then a lot of people re-upped for the second 30 days that started yesterday. And so they're either taking on a new habit or deepening their first habit so that it's more transformative. So that is another thing I'm doing, which is a lot of fun right now. That's cool. That's linked in the show notes if people want to. Yeah. Yeah. So here is our, here are our lovely chocolate cakes with cashew cream and some raspberries. And then you wanted to see the main dish as well. That, that looks incredible. People are asking if your cashew cream recipe is available anywhere on your website. Uh, I, it is. I think it's called whipped. It, let me see. I think it's, well, just if they search for cream, I think they'll find it. It'll be in the, in the search results if they search on cream. I'll look for it. Yeah, sorry about that. That's and then... Here is our main dish with our side of vegetables, roasted vegetables, and our stuffed bell pepper rings. And then we have for our salad course, we have our salad with no oil, balsamic, pears, dried cranberries, and roasted nuts. That is going to be some dinner, let me tell you. Thank you. Yeah. Do, do, do you eat this many courses every day or do you eat like in general, like on a day-to-day basis, do you eat a little bit more simply? I eat, I eat more simply. I <laughs> usually, I eat a lot of leftovers because I'm testing recipes a lot. So even my breakfast can be, you know, bean soup or rice casserole, or I, I'm, I am a leftover person, or I, I try to follow your advice about cooking up lots of vegetables to have. So I try to always have containers of steamed vegetables. And so then if I have some sauce or a little bit of rice, I put those together and have a bowl, but I'm, I'm really kind of a, a scrounger in terms of that. But then I try to cook, you know, dinners that my husband likes, and then I might have leftovers from those as well. So I can't give as many away, you know, usually also when I, cook when I used to do demos I would make food and then everybody would eat it but now I do my classes and the food's all right here because I'm not giving samples which they don't like either they'd rather have samples but we're all used to that now I sometimes like leftovers better than the first time and I had it totally agree totally agree often the flavors have blended and the texture is nicer you can control how hot it is. Yeah, I totally agree. I love leftovers. I am a leftover person. What does a typical day of eating might look like for you and exercise? Uh, again, I, I really, I don't have a set breakfast. I usually try to, uh, I try to eat two cups of steamed vegetables at breakfast and lunch and then surround it maybe with a little bit of soup or some grains and a sauce. Sometimes I have like, it took me many, many tries to get a nice plant-based whole food uh, barbecue sauce done. So I've had barbecue sauce in my refrigerator for a long time, for example. But if you mix barbecue sauce with hummus, it's so good. Or with no oil mayonnaise, it's so good. So there's like endless possibilities with, with barbecue sauce. And then I, um, lunch, same leftovers first for dinner I always have a large spinach salad with you know whatever no oil no oil dressing I have on hand and then some part of the entree or other dishes that I've made for my husband nice and then exercise I right now Usually during the spring and summer, I try to run. My goal is to get ready for the Portland half marathon in October. 
I do not set any speed records, but it's a nice goal to sort of build up to that early October race. And I, I don't like really cold, so I won't start doing that till March or April. And then I, otherwise I try to walk 10,000 steps a day. That's really nice for me. That works for me. I do it usually in two, two sets of, you know, walks, two walks around the neighborhood, which is a bit hilly here. And I, three times a week, I do the New York Times nine minute strength workout, which I noticed like, for me, it was just like, great. I know I should, I know I should do strength exercises. Everybody says do strength, do strength, do strength. And I, um, it was great to have something that was only nine minutes, 11 minutes with the two breaks. But then I noticed like three or four months later that I had a lot less arm jiggly here. And it's like, oh my gosh, nothing had done that for me before. So those, it's like a, a minute of push-ups and a minute of plank and a minute of mountain climbers. So a minute of all your least favorite exercises, but a minute, you know, I just have my kitchen timer there and it works. So that's what's working for me right now. That's wonderful. Dina wants to know if you, in the brownie recipe, could you substitute just more applesauce for the almond butter? I haven't tried that. But I think it's worth a try. I would try that. Great. And question, what's your husband's, of all the things you make, what does your husband like the best? Well, I would say he likes, I make a cashew-based fettuccine Alfredo. And I use usually whole wheat fettuccine noodles. He likes that a lot. That goes down really fast. That's great. Well, God, you are very talented. I'm where, where have you been all my life? <laughs> well, I hope we can uh, work together again or. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll book you again. I mean, I'm booking for June. You can come right back. You're very, very, very talented. I'm very impressed with your, with your culinary skill. Oh, thank you so much. Coming from you. That means a lot. I, 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 listen, I can spot them and I, you just have just, just, I mean, even in your plating, just, it's just a, you have such elegance. Well, your, your website, your, your name is graciously vegan, right? Gracious vegan. Yeah. Gracious vegan still. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or you could be the elegant vegan. Yeah. I just kind of throw it on the plate. Well, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you and your recipes are spectacular. Thank you. Chef AJ. Well, thank you. Lot. This was very, very impressive. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you. My pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous culinary dinner, dinner, demo, could be a dinner. We're going to be going to the Hippocrates Health Center in Florida, where yeah. Chef Ken, the executive chef, is going to be making some recipes. This I love the recipes part. I mean, just so it's so enjoyable for yeah. me to watch. So, yeah. so have, have a nice lunch. <laughs> yes, I will. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks. Take Linda. care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You know, wait, one question before I let you go. Where do you want to send people to your website? Do you like them to go to your social media sites? In which ones are you active on? Website is probably the most active or Facebook. Facebook. I put that in the show notes. Thanks again. Take care. Okay. Thanks.